Reshim Kelly and the Vice Chair of Pennsylvania Film Industry Association. And I'm excited to welcome Mary Ello, who is not just from Pennsylvania herself, which I'm very excited about, <laughs> but also Mary is such an established producer and has worked with so much A-level talent and has such amazing films that she has done. And I think instead of just taking your time, I will just ask you to share how you got started in this industry and how long did it take you to get where you are today? Well, first of all, let me tell you, well, thank you very much. Uh, and I am from Philly, I wanna state this. I'm always gonna be a, a, a soft pretzel, tasty cake, candy girl. Uh, I don't eat hoagies anymore, but um, I, I love Philadelphia and I hope to get back there sometime to make a movie actually. Please. <laughs> Beautiful place to, uh, to, you know, grow up. Um, yeah, so I got started, I, I've had a journey. And I always say the journey is the destination, right? So anybody that's trying to just get to the award or get to the big box and all of that, um, uh, I had to reevaluate it about uh, 15 years ago, 10, 15 years ago on what the goal is and the goal is every day and, and um, put a lot more spirituality in my life. Uh, and I believe that's fueled my passion and, and excelled it. Um, the way that I got here is uh, I attended USC, but uh, didn't didn't graduate. So that's hard, but if you have the opportunity, please do graduate. Uh, and so I, I am a proponent of it. Uh, however, I got to work and it worked for me, uh, but it was a bumpy ride, but uh, that also makes me seasoned. Uh, I feel failures uh, become victories because you learn a lot. If you do learn a lot, then I think that you can really uh, uh, excel. I'm always learning, always will be. Uh, I started out in producing uh, talk shows in New York and in LA and news magazines, investigative journalists, entertainment journalists, you know, and then investigative um, where in the mornings, we were told, you know, I was at CBS and other places, and Paramount, and the first thing we all had to do going up the ranks is to, and back then, getting newspapers, and, you know, we would be assigned areas of the country, Florida, Texas, you know, our hotbeds, by the way, for a lot of really juicy stories, uh, and just exciting, you know, learning and understanding, um, you know, true life stories, which is still my passion. You know, I do what I do to wake up people and inspire people and to use the medium of filmmaking uh, to give a message because we have a lot of power in our hands, meaning we have a lot of opportunity to have millions of people see what we do. So it's, it's okay. I still do a popcorn movie there and here and there. Um, and, and I may always do that, but I'm trying to do more and more meaningful stuff. So the way that I got here... Um, and starting out with understanding the real life story, uh, how to get the rights. And um, in fact, the first thing I really did in 2001 is way back, is way back, uh, is I got a call. My father had passed when I was young. And so Father's Day was kind of open for me. And uh, I uh, got a call from one of the people that would give me these real life stories for the shows and said, you know, an Iranian princess was just smuggled to America. She fell in love with a, a US Marine. And uh, you have time to meet them at Mel's Diner down the street. Um, Father's Day, I said, I'm there. And I was there 15 minutes. And that ensued into being one of the biggest bidding wars in history. And, you know, we were an hour on Oprah and, and USA Today and very quickly, too quickly, because it could have been a better film. Uh, but Columbia TriStar and uh, NBC, it was a TV movie. I do mostly features, but it was a TV movie. And, and that's really how it started and then began to start more and more. And I've done a lot of real life and I have some great stuff coming out this year, which we can talk about later. But that's how I started. Um, and so everybody has a different journey, but you don't just go, bam, I'm into features. Some people do. Uh, and I know that most people want to do them. I, I produce several series and more magazine type and talk show, but that's how my journey started. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's 
it's very inspiring and the story with the princess not everybody gets started with royalty in the industry so yeah that's that sounds really fun Who were some of your mentors or maybe some major inspirations when you were getting started? Right. Um, I've had different ones through the years. Um, first of all, my mom, but it sounds cliche, but she's passed. Mm -hmm. And um, really, I was blessed because I know other people um, aren't always. And although my dad passed when I was young, my mom always told me that I could do anything. And, um, you know, be the best, whatever it is. And um, so that is and always will be my greatest mentor. Um, in, as far as in the business, I've had a few. I've um, had some very well-known actresses uh, that I felt were doing significant things. Uh, a couple had asked me to be their producing partners. I elected to stay on my own uh, at the time. Uh, but very powerful, you know, uh, women. But I've been around so many, the Charlize Theron and Sharon Stone and to Michelle Rodriguez. Um, and, and, you know, but mentors for me, um, I've had a few. Interestingly enough, my mentors might be different than most. Uh, one of the books that I have found significantly um, impacted me was Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Mm -hmm. So my outlook is... Um, you know, what you do can uh, be a catalyst to help so many. So my favorite day isn't the red carpet. Uh, my favorite day, well, one of my favorite days is knowing that the movie's greenlit and we got the money. But uh, the other favorite day is actually the first day on set, the smell of the set, the old people, you know, if there's 100, 200, 300 people on set, and, you know, you've got your costume design, you've got your DP, your director, other producers, but even the person at the snack table is important because uh, without all of us there, uh, you know, one thing will tip. It's a domino effect. But I think what's so important is, is that each one of those people are now working and they're helping their families or significant others. So that's really a mentor. It may not be the answer that people would assume, but uh, those are type of mentors for me. I have had one gentleman um, that, uh, the couple, um, there's a guy named Ralph Winter that I really look up to. Um, he did a lot of the X-Men and Planet of the Apes and things like that uh, because he's very picky in what he does. He's very honorable and um, he's very, very good. And, um, you know, I've, I've also had some bad partners in life and that's a learning lesson to be careful on who you work with. Um, I've had some interesting journeys, but over the last few years, I've had wonderful partners and wonderful financial backers uh, behind me. Um, the other is, is, is right here. Um, I don't know if you can see it. So the kid stays in the picture. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, um, the last movie he would have done if Paramount had taken it, uh, he took it in, which was a dream come true. Again, in I think 2001, 2002, a friend of mine brought me to what was called the Sundance Film Festival. And now I've had a few movies in there last year. Um, and uh, I just found the magic. There was this documentary called The Kid Stays in the Picture. And I say it's required viewing for any producer, for sure. Watch the documentary. I wanted to be the girl, they say the guy, with the cigar behind the camera. Um, and what does that mean? That means being the boss, but being the boss, more of the leader, being inclusive and being caring. Uh, and I'll tell you about that journey too. Um, but Robert Evans, uh, who produced from Godfather, Star is Born, Chinatown, Bonnie and Clyde, um, you know, the best. Love Story, um, you know, ran Paramount. You know, he still had his office at Paramount. He died, he passed last year. And I got to go to his sanctuary, his home, and hear so many stories. And, and he wrote, this is one movie I didn't produce, the documentary, but he said, when luck meets opportunity, and you've got it, kid, you know, you got both. I don't know if I believe in luck so much, but I do believe in seizing the opportunities. Mm -hmm. And... I have to say Robert Evans for me. And if you ask a lot of producers and directors, mm -hmm. um, we'll often refer to that gentleman who we lost this last year. So I'd say him. What a legacy. That documentary, very important, required viewing.
<laughs> yeah, no, thank you. Thank you. We, we, this is practical advice. This is some tools and resources that would be very helpful. That was a turning point for me watching that documentary mm -hmm. and know this is what I want to do. This is who I want to be like. It wasn't an easy ride. I mean, he had a bumpy ride. I had a bumpy but as I said, you know, fasten your seatbelt because we're in an interesting business and you, you're either going to weather it and you're either going to be that passionate about it. Passion is a big part of this and relationships is everything. So learn to cherish them and learn to definitely treat the assistants and the PAs, whether it's at an agency or at a management company, foreign sales, or at a firm, or a financial, because those people will be running the studios and the companies, and that's not the reason to treat them kindly, but if you don't, mm -hmm. you find that out, and, that, and that's something I learned years ago. Treat everybody equally. I see sometimes people that don't. It doesn't work. It doesn't work, you know? Thank you. You brought up pitching. And uh, that's a magic in itself. And uh, having the right approach or the must-have items or something that makes a pitch stand out. What are some secrets to it? Well, I can tell you a few things that are very important. Number one, um, if you can go and see it's a story. It goes back to the story, right? And you can get the rights. You don't always have to pay a bunch of money up front. You can say, look, I'll do a deal. When I sell it, give me this for a period of time. And then develop the script. And you also don't have to pay a fortune for a script writer. There's some people that aren't WGA. A lot of people aren't, you know, the Writers Guild of America. And, or you have a script, write it yourself. Um, the pitching, you know, is important. You need to have a script. What's really important these days is a, a deck. Mm -hmm. And the deck is a, I like to put in pictures. They're not from your movie because you haven't made the movie yet. So they're, they're really um, visuals of a texture of what will the movie feel like? What will it look like, you know? And if it's rights driven, it's a great story. You have, you have something, you have a foundation right there. If it's just a, a good movie, a good story, still do the deck with all the tonal pictures. You know, you can take movies that might represent that. Uh, get the synopsis in, the log line, you know, the two liner a synopsis you know, put who's in it and then put potential cast. Who do you want in it, in these roles? Potential, you have to put potential. Yeah. You can put cast, but they're not a match. Um, you should also learn how to do a finance model. Mm -hmm. And they really should be teaching that. I assume they are now in college. Mm -hmm. um, how to break that down. I also go further. I do an ROI, means return on investment analysis. So I do a deep dive analysis of what it looks like. I will give a little secret here that I feel that um, a genre movies that includes thriller, action, horror, it could be all in one, a horror action thriller, or one of the, you know, uh, have a tendency to get a little bit easier made, especially in the lower budget. And they sell. You also have to go get a foreign sales company, right? Or you get a mini major or an independent distributor. Um, if it's a first movie and you're coming out of college and you're making it, um, also what can be effective if budgets are limited is to make a short. Many people that I'm getting pitched movies right now, I just got pitched a great one from one, the number one agency in the world. It was based on a short about the college admission scandal. Big star attached as a father. It's a thriller. Love the name of it. I can't talk about it because I don't own it and I'm not sure I'm going to do it. Uh, we have a lot on our plate, but it intrigued me, right? Because it was about the college admission scandal that we all read about recently with some of these people that are great actors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, many other people, not just actors. Um, and um, so that's interesting. Take something relevant like. Karen is a, a lower budgeted film, but when I heard the pitch, I'm like, wait, you had me a Karen, right? Because every, there's a Karen, there's a Karen, courtside Karen, LeBron James. And I'm like, wait a second. So then they got Ben Crump, who's the real attorney for Breonna Taylor and, and George Floyd in the movie. He was on set yesterday and they got a great actress for Taryn. And I said, I'm going to do it. And the script was great. So 
And that is a director that's only done movies under a million, but he knew what he wanted and he wrote a great script. And we went, yes, yes. Take something relevant, you know? Um, so, you know, I, I think, cause there's so many scripts out there. So many ideas. Take something unique, relevant from the headlines. Um, I tend to like female lead empowerment, but I just like real life stories. I have some great stuff coming out. Some have the female lead, some don't. It's really about, can I wake up? Can I inspire people? Mm -hmm. um, am I telling a message? I do a few popcorn movies here and there, but I do want to be able to feel like there's some inspiration there or changing the world. I think my dog just joined me because I'm at home for the pandemic. <laughs> Hi, Hi, <Lord. laughs> What kind of messages do you personally uh, like to share with the world? Uh, what would you acquire well, if it was brought to you? I, I can tell you about a project right now that I'm, I'm so excited about. We just got our star attached, but we haven't closed, signed the deal. So I can't talk about her, sure. but I actually fought for this one. Uh, and it's called The Girl That Fell From the Sky. It's about, it's sort of where faith meets science. I'm a faith-based girl too. I'm a big uh, spirituality and I pray every day. So it helps being in this crazy business. Um, but it's a story in 1971, a young girl, 17 year old girl with her mom got on an airplane and the plane got struck by lightning over the Amazon. And um, she was seatbelt. They were all in their seatbelts. Her, her, seat got catapulted out in the seat belt. She fell 10,000 feet, the longest that anybody's ever lived and fell into the treetops of the Amazon. The, the real person's still alive. And for 11 days, she survived. Everybody died. Wow. It's in, yeah. So that is incredible. Um, yeah. I have a movie coming out with Halle Berry this year on Netflix. Uh, why did I love it? Because it was, um, it was really a female empowerment underdog story of a, an MMA fighter that sort of was washed up, um, had her demons, lost her son to her husband. Um, he was a cop. He got killed in the line of duty. And next thing you know, her six-year-old son shows up on her doorstep and she has to go back in the ring. It's like a female Rocky. And it was Halle, <laughs> my dog, it was Halle Berry's first direct, directorial debut and starring in every scene. And it's incredible. And uh, the opening night of the Toronto Film Festival this year, this past year, we got picked up and um, the agent is amazing at, at, at uh, Endeavor Content. And we got a massive deal and I'm excited that's going to be on. And I have another movie on Netflix that uh, we just got, the announcement just came that uh, Barack and Michelle Obama just picked up. Unbelievable. And they're going to announce it on Netflix before the movie. They're going to say something. And that was at Sundance this last year. Hillary Clinton came to the premiere. I got to spend some time with her. And uh, it's the story of the guy, I was so drawn to it called Worth. Originally it was called, What is Life Worth? Mm -hmm. And it's about the guy, Ken Feinberg, that was uh, elected and, and, and hired mm -hmm. by insurance companies and airlines to be the pit bull, to be the, the guy that comes in and value every person's life, whether it was a CEO or a young girl, what's their value? Oh, fireman's just worth this, but a CEO's worth a lot. So pay as little as you can. And he had an arc. It's Michael Keaton mm -hmm. as Ken Feinberg and Stanley Tucci. Gotta love Stanley Tucci. Yeah. And they, they meet him and he is a complete turnaround where he becomes their proponent against the various people that hired him. And it was hard not to. So that's gonna be out in September in Netflix. And uh, we just got word also, yeah, the Obamas saw it. They just came on board. So, yeah. I mean, come on. It's so exciting. Amazing. No, it's yeah. very exciting. This is like, more, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's really great. Congratulations. That's super exciting. Well, thank you. I'm very proud to be a part of it. Yeah. Um, movies I produce and I'm the lead producer, I finance or I've developed or I've co-written now. I've got mm -hmm. some movies co-written. That yeah. one I just raised money in and, and the other, but uh, to be a part of those um, is very exciting. I've been animated with Jamie Foxx and then uh, we're in post right now. We're just completed, uh, brought some financing in with Sean Penn directing and, mm. and star.
Miles Teller and Josh Broyland. So very excited. So I'll come in in a smaller way, an executive producer or co-producer, and then I come in in a big way if I own it or the lead producer. And so it's all different ways. Yeah. Wow. Ex really exciting. You bring up a lot of A-level uh, star names. And of course, this is one of the biggest challenges to get people of that level into your film. But in order to get people of that level, you need budget. But in order to get budget, you need people of that level. So how do you juggle right. the two? <laughs> hey, it's the old chicken and the egg. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. Well, guess what? I'm still dealing with the chicken and the egg every day. Um, look, now in my life, because I've been doing this for 20, 25 years. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Um, you know, or 20, 23 or something like that. Um, look, I am blessed to have. And I want to say, I have female investors behind me mm -hmm. and, and some big, you know, of, of wealth and they're wonderful. And I feel like they're all family to me and I treat them that way. And by the way, I'm very, very tough to negotiate with. So I'd like to negotiate till I have fatigued the other side <laughs> to the point where they go, okay, <laughs> stop. Uh, but it doesn't always work, but pretty much it does. Uh, so, um, you know, look. Not everybody is blessed to know somebody, but, you know, read the papers, read who's in your neighborhood, read who wants to support a cause. Mm -hmm. um, the one that fell from the sky, I mean, Julianne, the real life person who survived is, is give, you know, she's helping, you know, make the sure that the rainforest survives. So who are some stars that want to get behind that? Who are some investors that want to get behind that? Um, know your investors. Um, or you have a roster of them. If you don't have a roster and you're newer, um, you know, there's all kinds from a blueberry farmer, dairy farmer, real estate mogul, hedge fund. I mean, there, there's all kinds. I always say real estate moguls make great um, investors because a lot of the big film funds, um, a lot of the people start out as real estate, interestingly enough, um, because I do comps. Like you, you go to a neighborhood and you do comps of the value I do comps, so if I have an action thriller, let's say my movie Bird's Eye that I co-wrote, it's a Russian-American spy film uh, based on a book called Sexpionage. Uh, it's very fascinating, happens all the way into our government uh, infiltration. Um, you know, I did comps with Atomic Blonde and, and uh, other movies that are in that genre so that you can see how well they did, or if you have a biblical film, whatever it is, so we do that in real estate, people understand that and understanding escrow and all that. Um, so I will say that you don't always have to have the money to get a star attached, but you have to know somebody to get that star, right? And sometimes the star just goes, this is so good. And, and even for newer directors or writers and producers. So, but again, you, you need to know somebody to kind of get in. Um, I don't know if I answered that question before, but so, so you you suggest uh, building relationships first, and then already, right? I mean, out. yeah, I mean, you can go to companies, you can go to studios. I'm an independent producer, mm -hmm. really. That doesn't mean it's low budget movie. I'm doing movies that are 21, 25, 30, 35. Uh, but you know, in the independent world, I know really well the studio system is great but you know you can also get your project sort of a cog in the wheel there where you don't move and an executive leaves and then yes. nothing happens to the project and you don't get it back for a few years it's called turnaround mm -hmm. uh, you also give your rights you know you can meet somebody on an independent level um so you know you don't just need to go out and get rich friends but you 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 know, I think the way of a short is a good way to do it or try to make it for less money. But shorts, again, right now are very hot. If you do a great short, because I know we're speaking to a lot of universities, right? So I want to be down to earth here, right? Yeah. Um, making a short film about something prolific and unique, uh, like a 10, 20 minute, but has the arc and the story. A lot of the people are getting into the big agencies with that and then getting it to the festival and being seen. That's a big win right now. Okay. And again, 
I mean, this project I just got pitched had a big star, uh, college missions. That's what this person did. And I've gotten a number of those. So it's a good way to do it. And it's cost effective. Mm -hmm. You know, and then they see the idea of your short and then you get your investors. Mm -hmm. A lot of, times, you yeah. know, because I think a lot of people in film schools are doing shorts anyway. Mm -hmm. True. And you have access to equipment. So, which is already <laughs> got exactly. a huge cost. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it's actually also for the aspiring filmmakers who are not in college, it's a good way to uh, create films is collaborating with students who have access to equipment and together you can, you can really Excellent. bring something. Mm -hmm. Investments, the tough one. Uh, yep. What is the proper way to talk to investors? Uh, what are some good ways of approaching them? You've mentioned who make some good investors, but what is the way to get to them? Right, right. So let's say uh, you've got a feature, you've got a script. Um, you can make it contingent on you attaching a star, depending on the budget. Um, and how do you get the value of that star? Well, you should seek out foreign sales companies. Mm -hmm. um, there's a number of great A-list ones, Film Nation, Sierra, The Exchange, Solution Entertainment Group. Although there's a few smaller ones that stay away from. They're, they're, you know, you, one of the things when you get to a foreign sales company and they'll help give you value to stars, um, make sure that all these senior lenders, the banks and private lending institutions and companies work with them because that means they've paid their dues back, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so the question was, you know, how do you, to, you know, get secure the investment? The other thing is offering a great deal, right? Everybody wants a great deal, right? Oh, I want a bad deal, right? Of course not. <laughs> You, if, if it's equity is always the hardest to find. And for lower budget movies, it would be a good idea to do all equity because then you don't have any senior lending in front of you. So if you have a million dollars, you know, or a $500,000 budget, you know, try to raise it all in equity. So it's in parity pursue, it's an equal recoupment. Mm -hmm. And so, and give them a standard 20% on their money. And then on top of it, you give them the real estate, what we call are the back end points, the contingent compensation, compensation on all revenues. Now, if it's a streaming deal and you sell it to a Netflix or Apple or Hulu or, you know, any of the major Amazon, um, they'll just buy it out and your investor gets the money back. Mm -hmm. Hopefully with their premium, with that extra 20%. Um, if it's an independent movie, then the revenues will come in on different things. It'll come in on a PVOD, premium VOD, or through the theatrical, which the market hopefully will come back again uh, after, you know, post-pandemic. And I think it's starting to slightly. Um, and uh, then, you know, video on demand, VOD, uh, then digital, and then mobile, and, you know, and airlines. I mean, airlines used to be a big business where you make extra revenue. That's coming back as well, you know, post-pandemic. Um, so um, I think you have to promise them, you know, a good deal. Uh, and sometimes the other way is to promise them a co-copyright deal so that they would be an ownership in your script. Uh, but be careful because you want to make sure that they're the right people and uh, that they have that security in there. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you brought up equity and uh, some some other uh, financing and options. Yeah, could you please go <laughs> over these financing options in detail yeah. so that the filmmakers know what what they could offer? <laughs> right. So think of it as if you were in a theater, right, mm -hmm. and visualize it, and you actually have uh, the senior lending. They're right in the front row, so they recoup from foreign sales from the domestic sale, they, they're first out, mm -hmm. okay? Also there's bridge lenders, which would be first out. So that's debt financing, senior lending, okay? So they get a lower rate, 4%, 15%, 12%, people try to get more these days, but they're first out. They get very few points, if any, maybe three, four, five points on the back end. Then there's called mezzanine financing. You don't always have mez, mez lender, mezzanine. 
Uh, there's also gap, but let's talk about mezzanine. Mezzanine would be sitting like in a mezzanine of a theater behind that. And they would get points on the back end. Their rate of their premium would be somewhere around 17, 18%. And they'll get, uh, you know, some a good amount of points, but not as many as equity. Then the equity sits behind it. They get 20% on their money and they get all the back end points, which is usually anywhere from 40 to 50% on that side. The other side is the um, actors, the director, stars, writer, and all that. So there's the producer side, which encompasses all that. And then there's the financer side. Mm -hmm. And that's the back end. So all of the different revenue streams, yeah. they'll recoup equally at the same time. So I, I don't know if that's too much information. No, no, this was great. This was a really great map yeah. breakdown. So that was perfect. Thank yeah. you. Could you please share what what is key to ensuring domestic distribution? Right. Goes back to the screenplay. And it is helpful if you have a, there's two things I can tell you, because wrapping Karen today, and we have a great star, Taryn Manning is great from Orange is the New Black. But there, oh, there's sometimes like, you know, if it's not a huge star, if it's a huge star, Liam Neeson, Russell Crowe, whatever, I mean, there you go. If it's a mid-sized star or lesser known star, the concept can just be really great. Um, you know, look, Nate Parker just did um, American Skin for a half a million. Mm -hmm. And I know that it's made, I don't know, millions already. It made, I think uh, my friends own the company Vertical Entertainment. I think it already made six or seven million already for them. So again, it can be done. Um, so I'd say that, again, I'd go back to the genre movie, you know, horror. I'm not a huge horror fan. I've done some horror, but if you are, great. Action, thriller, or if you can do all three uh, for the first movie, or you have an amazing true life story. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and that is to help for the distribution. Now there's what we call the streamers, which I'm a big fan of. Some people aren't. Scorsese's or or Spielberg, let's say, uh, may not be a big fan or, you know, what just happened with it, with uh, Wonder Woman, right? And, and uh, the, you know, some of the other things where they wanted the big theatrical and, and it went to, you know, HBO Max and things like that. But I appreciate them. And I almost think, even when the pandemic isn't going, that sometimes the Netflix and Amazons and Apps and Hulus give you a much bigger audience, right? Look at Queen's Gambit. I think it's up to 75 yeah. I mean, extraordinary work, but um, even Bird Box, I think, went to 100 million with Sandra Bullock. So, I mean, you know, uh, streamers are very cool and I love them and they are very healthy in their payments. Um, you know, you might have to wait a little while, but if you have a good project, you could find an executive. They don't have to be a high level and they want to find the dime in the rough. They want to find a great project. You can get it sent in. You don't need an agent for that. Really? Uh, and then the other is there's major studios, the Paramounts and, and, and Warner Brothers and Sony's. And then there's the mini majors, which are Lionsgate, Relativity and all that. They're all terrific. And then there's the independents like Vertical and, and um, you know, so many of these Magnolia. There's so many good independent smaller ones that you can get in mm -hmm. and, out and, you know, make your list. And also look at what they're, what they're focused in on, mm -hmm. you know, look, let's see, what does A24 do versus Bleecker Street? Bleecker may do more higher brow, you know, more elite. Uh, A24 does all sorts of things. Um, but, you know, look, know your distributor, know your investor, know your distributor. Mm -hmm. You know, if there is more horror. Okay. Who's had a lot of big wins and maybe it's the lower budgeted horror if you're coming out of college um, or action. Do your research. You guys are all smart. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. That's perfect. And what are some risk management strategies? Well, look, we're in a high risk business. Very. Um, and 
you always have to let your investor know that. And in fact, the contracts need to go, this is a high risk investment. Mm -hmm. um, but you can mitigate the risk by what I call equity. now. It's a hybrid of debt and equity. Uh, I just did this on this movie where um, I was able to put my investor's money against the theatrical, the premium bought, and the international in first position, but I still got 35 points mm. on the back end. Yeah. So deal. And then another investor came in, and then I put him against a music deal or, uh, you know, against the, inter the tax incentive. Right, there's one in Pennsylvania. So he recoups after the people that cash flow and he recoups the rest for unspent contingency. So there's ways to make it less risky. Mm -hmm. You'll yeah. treat it with equity too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And have you gotten a chance to film in Pennsylvania? I can't wait. I almost came close to one recently and I decided not to do the movie, but. Uh, I want to come home. It's been since I've been little girl, really. Uh, my, when my dad passed, we moved from Philadelphia, but uh, it was always uh, my, it's always in my spirit, my soul. So I'm hoping to go. I mean, oh, if I could only work with M. Night Shyamalan, you know, or, <laughs> so, you know, good Philadelphians. Yeah. Uh, but I, I hope to be there sometime soon. Well, for sure. We also hope you do. <laughs> we hope you do. You've been talking about a bumpy ride, a thorny road at times. Uh, so could you please share some challenges that you have encountered as a woman in film, especially in leading yeah. position? Well, I'll, I'll put it this way. I, I mean, I've had an interesting ride. I mean, again, know your partners. I mean, I, I had a biblical film I was working on at the time. We're working on it now. But, and uh, I flew with a, a megastar to Las Vegas uh, and it was a biblical movie. And we thought this was a real estate mogul who pulled up in his jet, right? It's right out of Entourage, if you ever watch that show. You know, gave us $25,000. We were having a great time. And, and uh, you know, I, he said, look, I have the rights to this. And I raised the money and bought something for a million. It turns out he was one of the biggest drug lords in the world. And it's a fascinating ride, let me tell you. But it was, it was something. So I said, know your partner. People want to make a movie about it, but I, I, I'm, I'm not doing that, but uh, know your partners. But um, I think that all the other things too is, you know, it's a, it's, it's a lot of work. It's those 14 to 16 hour days, six, seven days a week sometimes. And it's also the rejections. I mean, even still now, I'm just brutally honest. So I can send out an offer to a mega star and I still get like scared. Are they going to love the movie? And I know we have an incredible script. I mean, we did 31 drafts and it was, it's beautiful, but it's like, are they going to reject this? Are they going to, are they not going to love it? So, you know, I still have those feelings. So every day is up and down, but the thing is, it's kind of like riding a bicycle where you're going like this and you're going up and down again. And then it's point you start to, ride and you don't keep going up the hill but you're kind of there now and you're everything is is around i don't know if that's a good analogy but i think there's a point where you understand you know what you're doing you've built the relationships the relationships with the agents are so important the relationships with the managers uh leaving the set in a good relationship we wrapped a movie today called karen about the, it's a racial justice picture we're bringing you know, she was in the Borat, she was in Crude, she was cover of Time Magazine. We're bringing Karen, the racial, you know, can I the manager or the racist to life in a thriller for the first time. And that's important to have meaning in what you're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, we wrapped it today in Atlanta, uh, my partner's. Mm -hmm. um, so I think there's, um, you know, the highs and lows, expect it. Um, once in a blue moon, you know, people have these moments where they, do a small indie and it hits big and it's, you know, everything changes for them. God bless them. Uh, that's rare. It happens. Uh, but I think, you know, the most important thing is to start talking to people, meeting people, mm -hmm. uh, 
taking pitch meetings if you can get in. There's also pitch fests, things like that. Um, and trying to figure out, you know, do you have friends? If you're coming out of college and you're younger, do you have friends that are working in agencies that are in the mailroom, that are assistants? Um, are they working in management companies? I would even get in, you know, and start um, interning for a little bit, not for a long time, because I believe people should be paid or a paid intern. But to go back to your question, which was a long answer, um, in being a woman in this business, my answer is different. Um, I never saw myself with the ceiling. I didn't allow it. So I always saw myself literally breaking down a door, like a visual of kicking a door down. So when I went into a meeting before the Me Too movement, and things are changing, mm -hmm. God bless them, they're, they're changing. But I would always go in, it was mostly guys, and I love working with guys, by the way. But, you know, I was always often the only woman. There's a handful of us, and now grow, growing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I purposely sit at the head of the boardroom, you know, we'd be meeting, big meetings table. I'd pick a seat. I knew where I needed to sit. And one of the things is I actually looked at it as a gift being a woman, because a lot of times, at least back then, they didn't see me coming. Hmm. And you're smart and honest and know what you want to know what you're doing. Sometimes they didn't see you coming. I has always felt it as an advantage. There have been a few times where I felt the old boys network, but they're very rare. And now I don't think they have much of a chance to do that. You know, things have changed dramatically in the last few years, but I, my answer is I didn't let it happen. Now, I don't know if that's a, a good answer, but that's my answer. Yeah. So no, it's, yeah. it's a great empowering answer. So thank you. What would be the three key pieces of advice? So maybe lessons that you have learned or maybe mistakes that you can now share to avoid uh, that you can share with those at the beginning of the path. Right. Well, I think I said maybe it's coming full circle in the interview is that, um, you know, years ago, I got pretty full of myself and I, and I wasn't who I am today, which is a more spiritual person. And even though I've gotten um, more successful, um, I've been doing this for a while. Uh, one thing that uh, I will always say is never assume that you know everything because every day. I'm still learning more terms, learning everything. And the more you know, the more you know, just keep learning, right? You learn from other people that have preceded you, okay? Um, the other is, and I said this earlier, is, you know, the eye on the prize shouldn't be the award. The eye on the prize shouldn't be the money. That will come. The eye on the prize should be trying to, what am I doing with this medium that we call film and we love? You know, am I going to be giving a message? Am I going to inspire people, wake people up? And I said something earlier is treat, the, this is a relationship town. So when you get an assistant on the phone, become friends with that assistant, but do it for the right reasons because you're a good person and you're treating them well. But remember those people, those people coming out of college, those people in those positions, don't just do it because of that. But remember, they're going to be the big agents. They're going to be running the studio. So word of advice, and don't get the big, you know, don't, don't think you're all that because, you know, we're just vessels, really. And you pick your, your passion. And also, I think it's really important to remember, you're going to get a lot of no's. And you're going to want to give up. It's like an actor to a producer or director, writer. You're going to get so many no's, but it's that one time. I think Brad Pitt is a neighbor up here. I, I was reading about him recently because I think he went on 113 interviews or something, right? Thing. Then he finally got, I don't know if it was that, Thelma and Louise or something. But it's that one time where it goes, somebody goes, you know what? I really love this story too. You know, I love your script. You know what? I like what you're doing. It gives you that. And I know it sounds kind of broad, maybe cheesy, but I don't mean it that way. But if you, if I had given, there were times when I wanted to give up, 
you know? Um, and you just have to really, really, you have to be strong. And uh, there are dark times and there will be, um, but there's also these amazing times and these triumphant. And if we didn't have those dark times, the triumphant times wouldn't really feel that great. Sure. It makes it so worth it, you know, and doing important, you know, again, I've done some other movies, but important, take the, take something that is important to you, important to your family. It could be a personal story uh, or you find it in the newspaper, grab the rights or get it done. Um, and if you are writing about somebody, try to go get the rights first so that you have a foundation there of some, you're bringing value, but you also can show the value in that way too. Yeah, thank you. That was very empowering. Thank you very much. And to end this fantastic masterclass, whom would you like to nominate to be the next speaker, the next person who has already made it and wants to send the elevator back down? Oh, well, you know, I mean, there's so many names of, of people. Um, uh, gosh, I mean, I, 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 I could just give an example because I'm so enthused that these people are actually, you know, acquired our movie worth, but, you know, look at Obama. Yeah. The Obamas just ran the country and strongest in the world and you know here they are with higher ground yeah you know, giving people a chance or seeing great movies and you know the fact that we just got acquired by them and, and netflix on worth i mean that's the elevator right there giving back and giving back but i i don't know if that's a nomination but i think it's just an example of you know look if our president can do it yeah. I mean, we will reach out <laughs> maybe he will come and join I, us <laughs> but yeah I'm not there yet so but anyway I'm excited that they they saw the film and i'm yeah. a small one but i'm excited yeah, yeah no no that's amazing that they did it's it, honestly it's, it's incredible so congratulations it's really great it's a great movie yeah yeah that's awesome well mary you've shared so much invaluable information and you gave such great breakdowns and that's what we call practical this is exactly sending the elevator back down and sharing what you've learned what you've changed what you've done and how it could be done uh in a way that would be more efficient so that was that was amazing so thank you very much for sharing all this it was a pleasure maria it was really great and uh, i do hope this helps people in some small way and um and uh, God bless you guys all on your journey. And Thank you, Mary. Thank you. It definitely will help. We hope you come back to Pennsylvania to film here. And we have a mission to do it. And, and remember, the journey, as I said, the journey is the destination. So remember that and enjoy it and learn from it. Thank you. Yes. yes. Thank you. And to everyone who's been watching, we hope to see your films on big screens and major streaming platforms very soon. Good luck, everyone. <laughs>